Hey Facebook, welcome to Friday Night Live with uh, hey Magic Shores Travel. Although we're a little short staffed today because. Bit. Not everybody would come along. Not everyone would come along. Uh, you guys, next time let's all do it, okay? Yeah, there, uh, because we are broadcasting live. From the Grand Californian in Anaheim, California. So, uh, did you do a sound check? Are we good? I did. We're good. Okay, we're excellent. Ben is shared. Um, so hopefully everybody's uh, getting... Yeah, Magic Shores Travel <laughs> Affiliates. Get your butts on Facebook. And, uh, <laughs> please make sure share. share please this. share. Um, so anyway, our show's going to be just a little bit different tonight. And I'm uh, hoping that you'll enjoy it uh, maybe even more than usual. Because we're going to do our regular news segment, of course. And then we're going to give you a tour of the room that we are in at the Grand Californian. Did I call it Floridian earlier? I don't remember. I if I say Floridian, I mean Californian. <laughs> I'm really bad about it. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It, it doesn't look anything like the Grand Floridian, so it's weird, but whatever. Um, anyway, after we show you around the room and do the new segment, we're actually going to go on a walking tour of the whole resort where we'll end at the Storyteller's Cafe where Ben and I are having dinner tonight. So, yes. And then, of course, after we're done eating, we'll post pictures of <laughs> what we ordered at Grand at, uh, Storyteller's. Um, it might be a little light because... Well, should we tell them a little bit about our travel today? <laughs> yeah, hold on one second. I might be so, having some, we might be having some technical difficulties. Okay, Ben, stick it doing a check here. Of course you know that. You're watching. <laughs> so. Mine keeps cutting off. It's cutting off? Yeah, hold on. Mm -hmm. Let me go back. We're live? No, it's not. Hold on. Something's going on. Okay, Sorry, guys. Okay, we're going to restart. Just a sec. Hold on. Check it and see if it's still broadcasting. It might just be a connectivity issue. Okay. Uh... Oh my god, that stupid pop-up thing again. Uh, okay, Brian's so watching. Brian, can you comment if you can see us and hear us? Oh, no, Amy just commented. Amy, yes. So, okay, okay, great. Okay, cool. Sorry right. about that, guys. Sorry, um, guys. The, the uh, signal strength here, we had like one bar earlier, and uh, we didn't figure out how to get on the Wi-Fi yet. So uh, we literally got into our room 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so, yes. um, so anyway, this morning started out, we, we left... We woke up at 3 and left Hanover at 4.30 uh, for our 8 a.m. flight that got delayed till 9.20. <laughs> um, our pilot did some sort of miracle of physics that I, I'm not really sure how he did it, but we ended up getting here only 45 minutes late after leaving an hour and a half late. Uh, so we actually got to the airport at 11.40. Um, so just kind of for your own timeline, if you fly into LAX from 11.40, we flew in Alaska. They have a 20-minute guarantee that once you hit... The, uh, once the door opens, your bags will be at the carousel within 20 minutes. And they were. And they were. In fact, it was like 15 minutes. Is it like a gift card or something? <laughs> yeah, you they get a weren't... $25 gift card if they aren't there for you know if within 20 minutes. So I was definitely like, oh, it's 11.40. Okay, excellent. <laughs> they got till 12. Let's go. So by 12 o'clock, we were actually standing out waiting for Super Shuttle. Um, previously, we've taken Disneyland Express, and we tried Super Shuttle this time. I've taken Super Shuttle back, but never going to the resort. Uh, and the reason I want to mention it is because... We're so used to, in Orlando, Magical Express being the be-all and end-all of how you get to Walt Disney World from the airport. Disneyland Express is a very different. It's actually it run... Is. Yeah. It's run by the Southern California Gray Line. It's not run by the Disneyland Resort. There's no magical video. The drivers are not magical. And it only runs once every hour on its schedule, not on yours. <laughs> so we opted this time to try Super Shuttle because we were really not thrilled with the service on Disneyland Express before. And I've had other trips on Super Shuttle that I thought were fantastic in L.A. And last time we took Disneyland Express, it took 50 minutes. We got picked up at Terminal 1, and there are seven terminals at LAX. It took 50 minutes to leave the airport and then another 50 minutes to drive to Disneyland. So what's that, an hour and 40 minutes? Yeah. This time it took, um, we called for Super Shuttle at 12.05. It picked us up at 12.40, so 35 minutes. And we were at Terminal 6. So we were actually out of the airport in 40 minutes instead of 50, 10 minutes faster, and there were only nine people on our shuttle, and they were all coming to the same general area, we got here in about 40 minutes. So we saved 20, 25 minutes by taking Super Shuttle versus taking Disneyland Express. Yeah, and yeah. it was a very comfortable ride, I have yeah. to say. Our, I mean, our, our driver was going like 412 miles an hour, but it's okay. But like, that, I just assume that's how LA drivers right. work. And at so. that point, we were starving and didn't care. We were like, please just get us there fast. So... Um, we checked into Grand Californian, and unfortunately, our room was not ready. We've, um, usually, we, we've done pretty well at hitting this room-ready thing, yeah. and we've been able to get in our room almost right away. 
this it wasn't the case this time. Uh, we did have to wait. We actually waited until four thirty seven to get into our room. So, um, but that's why we're a little bit scattered here uh, getting started. So, yeah. um, that's kind of been our day so far. If you followed our videos earlier, we had lunch at the Plaza Inn, uh, which is like my favorite fried chicken in the world. But it's pretty ben good. Tried it today. He really liked it too. It's pretty good. And uh, we met Moana this afternoon, and we walked through Sleeping Beauty's castle. Good. So, and otherwise, we haven't done anything. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, on with the news. But we videoed our not doing anything. Yeah. So, <laughs> so hopefully, you guys enjoyed that, and uh, we'll be doing more of that as the week goes on. So, um, starting with Disney Cruise Line. Yes. Uh, so apparently, the Disney Fantasy is starting up superhero training on some of their cruise ships. I, I didn't have a chance That's to read me. all of the details, but. Um, it looks like you're going to train with Doctor Strange in the Mystic Arts, and you're going to do some training with Thor. I imagine it's for kids only, so this is my disappointment. <laughs> and that's on the fantasy. Fantasy only. Yes, for that. fantasy only as far as I know. On um, the dream, um, Beauty and the Beast, we've heard some more details about the new stage show that's coming to the dream, and it is going to be in a music box style. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it sounds kind of cool. Like, I'm actually more excited about that show just hearing that phrase. I, yeah. I'm intrigued. I want to see what it is. So, um, new details on Maybe that. Maybe I'll just spin in place. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, I, I, I really don't have any, I just can't, I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, also on Disney Cruise Line News, itineraries are now available for all through 2018. So you can book anything in 2018 now. Yeah. Uh, everybody is open all the way down to first time cruisers. So, uh, definitely give us a call. Your best pricing on Disney Cruise Line is as soon as those reservations open up within that first month. Yeah. So definitely and, uh, want to get on that. I think we mentioned last week uh, the new itinerary they're adding is Bermuda. Yes, and, and uh, uh, Bermuda's going to be sailing out of New York, and they're doing a three-night stop on at least one of the cruises. I think the others are two nights because they have some five-night and six-night cruises. For so Bermuda. if you fall asleep on the beach... On the first night, you're not, you're okay. you're you're not, not in gonna trouble. Miss your ride. Well, you might be in trouble, but you're not going to miss your ride. Uh, in fact, is it just me, or like in the past like week and a half, have we heard like a bunch of people talking about how great Bermuda is? We're going to Bermuda. How much we love Bermuda? Yeah, actually, we ran into people in the airport this morning yeah. who are from LA, and they were coming home from a cruise to Bermuda. And I was yeah. like, if you lived in LA, would you go to Hawaii? Why would you come to Bermuda? I don't know. I don't know. Um, that was that was kind of funny to me. <laughs> so I was like, well, I would go to Hawaii. But, I mean, we live on the East Coast, so maybe that's just our romanticism of Hawaii. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Um, Brian, okay. we wish you were here, because we've got a lot of extra space, which we will show you yeah, in a we'll few minutes. Yeah, we'll show you in a minute. Yeah, it's ridiculous. pretty awesome. So, we're going to get through the news quick, and then we'll get right on that. So. Yeah. Um, also, new in itineraries this week, Adventures by Disney also released Hi, their itineraries. And the big... New breaking news for ABD is Iceland. That's right. Iceland, Iceland itineraries volcanoes are Volcanoes so. and glaciers. Yeah, so if you are interested in Iceland, it's a great way to go. And it's it's multiple days at multiple locations within Iceland. It looks like a really uh, comprehensive itinerary if that's one of your like must-do uh, on your travel list. So, yeah. Um, I'm, you know what? I'm not. I just very quickly scanned it because it was uh, the day enough. before we were leaving, I, and I was packing. I just and just like yeah. saying Reykjavik. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty, pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. And it's called weird. Um, so uh, I actually don't remember seeing Reykjavik on there. To be honest with you, I think it's some other. Um, yeah, or maybe they were naming the glacier near Reykjavik uh, as opposed that, to the actual town. That's but, probably what it was. I mean, as long as you can see glaciers and volcanoes and puffins, like I mean, that's it, right? That's that's sounds, sounds good to me. Good. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Um, so, moving back to, let's go back to Walt Disney World. Yes. Okay, right. let's go to World really. Are we going back to Walt Disney World? Yeah, we're going to Walt Disney World. I mean, okay. we're not. We're here. We're in Okay, all right. You guys can go. Um, so, uh, there's a new um, quick service pre-order. So, at quick service restaurants, it started at Satuli Canteen in, um, it, or is starting, I should say, because Avatar Land is not officially open yet, but um, at Satuli Canteen in Avatar Land, you can actually go to the app place your order for lunch, and then walk over to the canteen and pick it up. So if you're next in line for the Navi River Journey, go ahead and key your order in, get off the River Journey, boom, go pick up your food. So that a awesome. lot of new efficiency coming to quick service. There are several restaurants that are supposed to be added to that list, um, but I believe they're just testing at Satuli Canteen first. That's 
Sleepy Hollow thing is that is so you can order your oh, chicken waffle. Fantastic. <laughs> well, you imagine can you order my chicken waffle if you're there. <laughs> it's really credit, so I can probably just have to just walk from the back of the park to the front. I'm good. Yeah. And we're ready to go. Speaking of other things that are um, happening in Avatar Land, um, the annual pass holder testing previews have opened. So some people have been able oh. to get into Avatar Land to check it out already. You don't have and any uh, here. two things that are happening there. Um, riders of size. So anybody who's, you know, waist size, yeah, calf size is a big one for people. Um, if you're... Wait, are you allowed to bring baby cows on? No, 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 the calf is in your leg. Oh, Not calf leg goes okay. With, no, wrong calf. Oh. Um, calf size, a lot of people are having trouble because they're both, there's both a leg restraint and a back restraint. So when you sit on the seat, everything has to click in to make a light light up. So you might click into place, but you don't get far enough to light up the light and the people who don't are being asked to leave the ride. And um, they're, first of all, they're working on it. They're, they're trying to fix the problem because apparently it's something in the neighborhood of 22% of people are being turned away from the ride. So that's the that's the um, So go to Beer Garden after. after. <laughs> that's the flight of, oh God, what's it called? Banshee? It's the Banshee ride, but it's the um, flight of the something. Navigator? No, the Navigator, yeah, they, no, Flight of the okay, Navigator the is the old fly. Disney. Is the old Disney. <laughs> it's the one where you fly. It's not the Navi River Journey. Just <laughs> messing with you. <laughs> this is what happens that with our other right, travel though. agents. It no, it's not. Right. It's not. Flight of the Navigator okay. is the is Flight the uh, is the Flight of Passage. It's Flight there of Passage. There we go. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Navi River Journey is the other one. No size issues with Navi River Journey. Complex. However, uh, everybody who is uh, using a wheelchair must transfer on both of these rides. So there is not a way to experience the ride. At least not in the vehicle. And you got passage, so. Okay. <laughs> so um, there's not a way to experience those rides in vehicle uh, or a modified vehicle with a wheelchair. So you absolutely have to transfer if you're going to experience those attractions. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if you are traveling with somebody or if you per you personally are using a wheelchair or a scooter. So. Um, and finally, in Disney World news... Last Friday was the premiere of Happily Ever After, and I wish that everybody else was here to talk about it too, because um, Jeff and Amy and I watched it after after the show last week, and... Well, maybe this I will encourage some of the other agents to do a little live review of it, like Amy, yeah. come on Amy. Amy, tell us what you thought. I, yeah. I, as far as I know, Not Amy Not in the comments, it. though. Amy loved it. I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It, it was pretty good. Um, um, yeah, I was really upset when I heard Wishes was going away, because... She was. It was... I, like, I really love Wishes. That's, it was my favorite nighttime entertainment. Like, I don't even go to Illuminations or Phantasmic anymore she, because I just don't care. She was sitting in the bathtub <laughs> fully dressed with a block of cheese. She doesn't drink <laughs> wine, but it was pretty bad. It wasn't quite that bad. <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, I was really upset to hear it was going away because I really did love Wishes. And it was just one of those, like, I just like to go to the Magic Kingdom and sing along to Wishes at night. Like, that was my favorite thing to do at the end of the day. And he also loves so, the new show. Yeah, and, uh, but the new show I think is really amazing. And what I've been reading and hearing uh, this week on, on the interwebs is that people who saw it in person loved it, thought it was absolutely drop-dead, amazing, gorgeous. And people who watched it at home on the internet hated it. And I was like, well, we watched it on the internet and loved it, so I'm thinking in person it has to be amazing. I'll admit, it took me, it took me until about maybe halfway through to start going like, all right, this might not be terrible. Yeah. Um, right, but I mean, I went in like totally preconceived notion. Like, I, hi, Jeff. not that I wanted to, not that I thought I was going to hate it, but I went in thinking it's not going to be as good as Wishes. Yeah, that, <laughs> so. oh, oh, I knew that's what you were thinking. <laughs> I was just thinking, wait, does this mean we go to Walt Disney World? I can get to bed before ten o'clock at night because that would be awesome. Uh, no, it doesn't mean not, that. No. It doesn't mean that at all. Um, I thought the projections were amazing. They, they were. They really they were. took the yeah. celebrate the magic projections. A couple of odd choices in combination. Yeah, there was, there was uh, one Brave where and Cars. Brave and Cars. That was a stands weird. out. Yeah. Uh, however, yeah. finally a good version of the song "Go the Distance" from yes, Hercules. Yes, that was uh, not Michael. Bolton. So if you're a Michael Bolton <laughs> fan, please leave. <laughs> Don't leave. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I, I have standards, you found them. Yeah, I will tell you, I don't care for the, the theme song, the overriding, the Happily Ever After song, uh, but the movie clips that they picked and the fireworks integrated with the projections with the music, I thought worked splendidly. So. Also, I will say Love is an Open Door is an odd choice 
for yeah that uh, one surprised me they like, could have really let, let, let it go in yeah I mean like let's face it the movie is a two is like an hour and a half long music video for that song yeah. so just leave it in it's okay guys we get yeah. it I mean I like Love is an Open Door but I think yeah. Let It Go was probably the more everyone culturally just relevant fa- choice everyone just fast forwards to Let It Go anyway <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway if you haven't checked out Happily Ever After yet uh, there are about 50 YouTube videos of it circulating there's, there's certainly one you can check out um, and if you, you know, prefer it spoiler-free, we can certainly get your trip booked so you can go and check it out for yourself. Except we just ruined, like, half of it. Yeah, that's true. Okay, don't listen to the, what we just said. Pretend that didn't happen. It'll be okay. Yeah, it it works in person. It's okay. You've seen uh, all of the clips in the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all together, it looks great. Yes. So. Um, and then we have a little bit of Disneyland news, of course, since yes. we're here. We probably ought to tell you what's going on. Um, I think we actually talked a little bit last week about Mission Breakout, um, the, the new um, the Guardians of the Galaxy three <laughs> skin for um, for the uh, Tower of Terror. Tower of Terror. There wow, we go. Wow, it's a good thing we were both here hey, on that one. Hey, hey, we were up at three a.m. today. <laughs> there has been we're very starting, minimal napping. We're fading a little bit. <laughs> three a.m. Eastern time. Um, so we're the, it's supposed to open it's the twenty seventh. The twenty seventh. So we'll still be here, and we're hoping to be able to get. To, I'm hoping to see the queue. <laughs> I'm not riding the ride. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will muster up all my courage okay. and ride the ride okay. for you guys. And you're gonna ride it. I'm gonna try. I'm proud of you. I mean, as long as they didn't, as long as they didn't do anything else. My hero. No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we will have some information about that, and hopefully we're going to get to do the, the uh, Groot and Star Lord and Gamora meet and greet, which also opens the same day. So we're fingers crossed on that one. Um, and then, of course, the um, Disneyland has several attractions that are down right now, and they have to do with the infrastructure changes needed to make Star Wars Land happen here. They've actually been down for about a year and a half. But coming back up in June, Disneyland Railroad, Disneyland Monorail, the Sailing Ship Columbia, the Mark Twain Riverboat, and Phantasmic. So five attractions that have been out of commission for about a year and a half are set to come back online in about a month. So if you were thinking about making a trip to Disneyland and thinking about, well, maybe I'll hold off for a little bit, New Guardians of the Galaxy, five classic Fantastic Frontierland and Disney classic attractions coming back online, it's a good time. It's a good time to come out here. So that does it for the news. Yes. Which... I think we made it in record time because we actually want to spend some time talking about the resort that we're at. So yeah. let me give you just a quick overview of where we are, and uh, then we'll take you on a little walking tour. So mm-hmm. um, anyway, the Grand Californian, um, you can kind of think of this resort as, let me back up a second. At Disney World, we have three classes of resorts, value, moderate, and deluxe. At Disneyland, you really don't have that kind of classification because you only have three on-site resorts. So, really, they kind of fall into more of a moderate deluxe, and I would call Grand Californian super deluxe. Yes. Because the location at Grand Californian doesn't match anything that Disney Disney World has to offer. It's true. Um, at Disney World, the best that you get is being able to walk to two parks, and that's at Beach Club or Boardwalk, or Swan and Dolphin, but shh, don't, don't stay there. Um, just, yeah. I, it's actually kind of analogous. As a friend, contem- I'll tell you, don't stay there. It's analogous um, to a contemporary. Yeah. In terms it's of location. Kind of, but you have walking access to two parks here and to downtown Disney. Oh, fair enough. So, and I mean, granted, you have that at Disneyland and Paradise Pier, but Grand Californian literally has a direct entrance to downtown Disney and a direct entrance to California Adventure. So you don't get that anywhere else. And they actually... Oh, shoot. I don't have my room, card, my room key. Do you have yours in your wallet? I do. So the room keys used to be blue for every Disneyland hotel. And they've actually updated the Grand Californian hotels to this cute little Chip and Dale pattern. <laughs> and, well, Chip. Oh, yeah. Just Chip. Wow. Just Chip. Wow. Way to not wow. show Dale what you love. Oh, gosh. I thought at first that there was a Chip on one part and a Dale on the other. And I was really impressed. And then I realized that... Never mind. Sorry. Can't do it. Um... At any rate, they are now restricting both of those access points to Grand Californian guests only. Because it used to be people from Paradise Pier would walk across the street, walk through Grand Californian, and use our park entrance to get into Disney. Our Disney's park entrance? Our park entrance <laughs> wow. to get into Disney California Adventure. And it would make the lines really We're only long. here for like, like two nights. <laughs> it's ours for two nights. I'm not giving it up. <laughs> so, it, anyway, they would make the line really long, and... There's only two bag check stations and two metal detectors in the back entrance versus out front there are like 12. So when you have two resorts worth of people out of three on-site resorts trying to cram through two turnstiles, 
it's it's just really kind of unfair because the magic mornings for California Adventure are only open to people who have at least a three day park hopper and people who are staying on site at one of the three Disneyland resorts. <laughs> so it became a really a really big bottleneck. Yeah. And, and we actually from Disneyland that... Hotel were streaming in from the front and beating us to the punch, basically. So. Yeah. In fact, in fact, we found that the couple of nights we did it at um, when we were here right. two years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would get down there like a half hour before the entrance opened because we wanted to be like first or second in line, so we didn't end up in the in the bottleneck. So yeah. it, it worked out, but um, it, there was still a line. Yeah, exactly. And of course, if you're staying at Paradise Pier, this is a dandy arrangement because you know I can just kind of saunter over through this nice lobby and enjoy my walk to the park, and then get in at the back entrance, pick up my World of Color Fast Pass because the kiosk is right inside the entrance, and then head into the rest of the park. But if you're paying the premium to stay at the Grand Californian, you want something exclusive about your access because why else is there, you know, what's the other reason to go and step up to that price point if you're not getting something of better quality for it? So that situation's been handled. Thank you, Disneyland. Good job. Um, where were we? We were talking about the categories. Yeah. Super Deluxe. Yeah, Super Deluxe. Yep. So not just um, the access to the two parks, and access to Disneyland as well, but you go through um, to, Disney, Disney to get to, to Disneyland. Um, but but you still get to go through bag check right. at the hotel. Right. So the way they've set up the security perimeter is that when you enter D- downtown Disney from the hotel, Grand Californian... Uh, you have or gone, from the parking lot. Or from the parking lot. You have gone through bag check. So when you go to the concourse that connects uh, California Adventure and Disneyland, there is no more bag check. It's pretty splendid. It's, it's pretty nice, I honestly. love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Because we've been here the old way, but when it used to be that across the, you know, the concourse is here at Disneyland and California Adventure, and the bag checks were right here, and then Downtown Disney was here. So... Hi, Stacey. That meant that Downtown Disney really wasn't secured at all and I mean it's not in Orlando either but here it's so everything's so compact it's so easy to change those choke points to make the entire area secure so now yeah. like, you can walk around downtown Disney and feel a little bit safer and yeah. walk through not that it was like you know. unsafe or anything right. like that just you know that everyone's gone through security but, already and if you're you're in a park for lunch or at lunchtime and you want to jump out to one of the restaurants at downtown Disney you had to go out and then to come back and you had to go back through bag check again it's like I just did no, this <laughs> I was just in the park what did I pick up from the restaurant that you think is dangerous you know? yeah. so anyway lots of, a lot of good changes happening um, at Disneyland with regard to that yeah it looks like uh did they just two pools pools back up after renovation? There are two pool, yes, there are three pools at the Grand Californian. Two of them, uh, actually all of them were down for renovation um, recently, and there are lobby renovations coming. So renovations are going to be ongoing at this hotel for the next six months or so, I think. In fact, our lovely theme park view includes a little bit of construction bit. view. Yeah, it's but... not too bad. We'll, we'll show you the view and over top of the construction. <laughs> but even so, Disney's really good about construction on, as a general rule. Um, I never shy away from staying someplace where they're doing construction because, first of all, even if the we have one pool missing and we're allowed to go across the street and use the um, better than the quiet pools pool here at Paradise Pier. So we're actually going to take advantage of that at some point. We hoped to do Maybe. it this afternoon, but it just didn't work out. Our timing got all messed up, so uh, we'll have to do that another time. But um, it, it's nice to have the opportunity to be able to still go and use. Like, we have two pools that are perfectly fine, and because our main pool here isn't up, we're allowed to go use another pool. So, I mean, when, when Disney does something construction-wise that's inconvenient, they make it up to you. So I never shy away from those kinds of experiences. I think they're good. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, decor-wise, I'd honestly say, and we're going to show you as much of this as we can, uh, like, Grand Californian uh, Wilderness Lodge and Animal Kingdom Lodge are like fraternal triplets. Right. They all share a lot of the same DNA, and you can definitely yeah. see they're related, but they're just different enough that you don't get confused about which is which. Right. And I would say, I mean, we've talked about this when we were sitting down in the lobby for a while this afternoon. <laughs> um, they actually have some of the exact same floor tile at Grand Floridian that they have here. Yeah. But when you look at the overwhelming theme of the, of the resort, you definitely think Wilderness Lodge. Um but it, I just thought it was really funny that they literally used the Grand Floridian floor tile in the Grand Californian. So it's almost like the Grand Floridian and Wilderness Lodge are merged as far as amenities and because there's on-site spa here um, and decor. Yeah. So it's kind of a neat uh, neat place. 
Um, there are two table service restaurants. One is Storytellers Cafe, where we're going to be eating tonight, and in fact, that's where our tour will end uh, yes. as we walk through the resort. And then the other is Napa Rose, which is a five-star uh, award-winning gourmet meals. It's it's I don't know much about food and stars, but it's like Disney's. It's definitely Disneyland's best restaurant. Is it? And I would say that it. I don't know if it rivals Victoria and Albert's, but it definitely outclasses everything else at Disney World. Actually, there is something very interesting about the Michelin star rating. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently the star rating is put out by the Michelin Company, which is the tire company. Oh, it's the tire company? It's the tire company. And what? It was, it was a book. What do they know about? It was a book, <laughs> and it was, one star was, if you're passing through, this is a good place to eat. Uh, oh. Two stars, two stars is like... Like, like, this is really good. You might consider making a trip a trip out of this, like making a trip just for this. And like three stars is, you should definitely make a trip just for this. Least, Interesting. That's what I heard on the internet. So, Well, yeah. Abe Lincoln said it. It's true. Yeah. So, it's okay. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's, and I think they go with, they might go with chefs, not necessarily restaurants. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyway, uh, continuing on to right. Grand California. Uh, we aren't going to talk a whole lot once we get into the main resort. So just a couple of the things that we're going to see. There is live piano music in the lobby. Uh, I don't know. It was recorded. I don't think there was someone at the piano. Yeah, there was. Oh, was there? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm I walked it. over and took a picture of her. Oh, she was definitely okay. there playing. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, there is live piano music in the lounge. I don't know if it'll be going on when we get down there. Uh, and in that lounge, it looks like a lobby area, but it's actually a lounge. You can actually be served drinks while you're sitting there listening to the piano. Yes, so they have use that on the tables. Mm -hmm. So, very nice... Uh, ambiance kind of uh, kind of thing. They do have a nice fireplace area. It's not as grand and stone, you know, Grand Canyon style like the Wilderness Lodges, obviously, because this is a different theme. This is more of a craftsman um, kind of woodland theme versus, um, I don't know what you would even call Wilderness Lodge. I, I don't know. All right, moving on. <laughs> So there's also the Whitewater Snacks Quick Service. So you really have a lot of variety in dining options just here at the Grand Flor uh, yeah. ah, Grand Californian. <laughs> Not to mention all of this, all of the options that are just outside your doorstep at Downtown Disney. So lots of lots of great stuff there. Yep. Um, the rooms we're going to show you a one bedroom. Uh, we happen to be staying on Disney Vacation Club for this right. weekend. So. so and this was the only thing that was available to us. So this is what we booked. <laughs> so don't look at this as what a standard room at the Grand Californian is because, because you it's will be different. disappointed. Yeah, it's different. But um, we'll show you what we have in the room. It'll give you an idea as far as the style. And, of course, the room itself, because we've stayed in the standard room before, um, two queen beds, uh, a full bathroom, uh, and I can't say for sure kitchenette, actually. Let me look at my picture here. Oh, yeah, you've got oh, a book. I have a picture. Uh, let's see, that's the look. She's looking at a book. Yeah. No, no kitchenette in the studios. Okay. Um, actually, not in the suites. The non-DVC suites either. So what, how this works with the, the properties that have Vacation Club, which is all deluxe resorts now, there's a hotel section and there's a Vacation Club section. You can book in the Vacation Club section as a cash guest. It's just that the style and configuration of the room varies a little bit. So ask your travel agent, that's one of us at the Magic Shores, about how that... Um, configuration differs between a standard room and a villa. Because Vacation Club is designed more as a timeshare. In fact, it right. is a timeshare. So, like, you are si you are currently sitting on an island in our kitchen. And when I say kitchen, I mean there is a stove, kitchen. oven, dishwasher, yeah. I mean, refrigerator, it's, it's nicer than all our behind you. It's much nicer than our kitchen. Quite I wish nicer. we could live here. Can we so, take cabinets out? It's, mm -hmm. it's, designed, it's designed for people who are planning to stay for a while and maybe make their own meals. Right. Unfortunately, we're only staying two nights and we checked in or we got checked into our room late, and we have to check out very early on the next day. On so, Sunday. So it's kind of a bummer. We're not going to get as much use of the room as we'd like, but yeah. it is what it is. So, so. Um, we're going to wreck it as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is there anything else uh, that you can think of that we should talk about before we actually take our... Uh, we're about tour? at the half hour mark. I so think if we... Yeah, I think we should bit. start... So we'll start with... Uh, we're, excuse us here. I'll have to get up and start moving the Yeah, we're going to have to fiddle bit. around and get some yeah. stuff. So when we leave the room, obviously, we'll have to get our... Right, because we'll be going to dinner, and you can't see us anymore. Sorry about that. So hey, we're, we're coming. Gonna... We're coming. Yeah. We're coming. Is everything right. still broadcasting? Everything okay. still looks good. Yep, so yeah. we're up and moving here. So this where we were sitting here, this is the kitchen table, and there are two more chairs that go with it. So it seats about, this is kind of funny, because it would actually seat like, oh, hey, there I am in the mirror. Hey. Yeah. Um, 
Probably three, four people comfortably, five, six, seven. I mean, I think you could put eight people around this you table if you were really... If you had enough chairs, you could put eight if people If you were trying, table. you could make it happen. Yeah. However, you can only sleep four people, five people in this room. Yes. So that's interesting. So this is the living room. This is a fold-out couch. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure if those are doubles or queens in the fold-outs. Most of them are doubles, I believe. And the sleeping uh, for the fifth person is the fold-down bunk. 